Hello everyone, I am Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Thank you for joining me again. Um, I am going to be doing a bit of a review of all the stuff that I've made this spring, so really since January. Um, now I have posted my previous sew and tell of everything I made sort of in the latter part of last year in the autumn uh, and then this is moving on kind of the, the newer makes. I did mention in the, the last video that I was, I've been really really poorly with some sort of anemia um, so my sewing has suffered a bit. I have carried on sewing but some days it's been like absolutely like swimming through treacle. I've had a pounding headache every time I stood up which has made it really hard to cut out or anyway not felt like it that much but I've made a few things so I'm going to talk you through them now. Right the first one is on my mannequin and it is a top and skirt and the top is it's made out of this scuba fabric that I got from FC Fabric Studio. The skirt is a three-quarter circle skirt that I made using the Stitch Sisters tutorial uh, which I'll post below and the top it's a pattern that is for wovens and it's a simplicity no actually it's a new look pattern which I'm going to post here see a picture of it because um, I can't remember the number and although it is a pattern for wovens I actually used it on the scuba because it's fairly stable and I still put the darts in but instead of using the facings I put a neckband on um, and it's just a little kind of springy two-piece separates I haven't worn it much really I I thought it'd be really fun playing with the stripes and it was um, but I think I just wear dresses more I don't know if I should have just made a dress with it but hopefully I'll get a bit more wear from it uh, come springtime I thought it'd be super super comfy to wear because it is you know it's got no sort of zips or fastenings or anything um, so that's the first make. These are in no particular order by the way. This is just a t-shirt pattern using um, a birder pattern for, um, it's supposed to have an elasticated waist but I didn't get around to putting it in and then I started wearing it and it was quite comfy as it was. It kind of looks a bit cocoony but actually it's just a straight down. It's got a, um, it's a setting sleeve. Um, but apart from that it's just a straight up and down t-shirt it was really easy to make and I'll probably be making a few more of those just because they are super comfy and cool for the summer oh the fabric for that leopard skin one was from Colville it's a cotton t-shirt jersey and I think it was £10 for three metres um, the next make, make I think is the favourite thing I've ever 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 made and it is the Tilly Buttons Megan dress made in a stretch fabric although the pattern is for wovens I um, took the seam allowance off at the back and cut the back pieces on the fold and it seemed to work out okay um, and I used this like textures textured knit fabric and this corally red knit fabric for the bottom um, both again from Colville's and the same price I think three oh no actually for forget that I think they're from Pound Fabrics, so they were probably about um, two pounds, three pounds a meter each. Um, but I really like the colours of this. This was white, and it's gone a bit pink in the wash, but it still looks okay. You can't really tell. The only problem I've had with this is this neckline. When when I'm wearing it, the neckline sits very, very proud. When I'm wearing it, this neckline sits very kind of far back from my body. Can you see there? It's like that. Um, I thought that it was my fault and that it was because I'd used the stretch fabric and it, or that I'd stretched the neckline out. And so I thought, I'll put it down to experience. Anyway, I recently tried to make it in, uh, make the same pattern again using a woven fabric and it was a very stable wo woven quilt and cotton. And when I tried it on, the problem was terrible. It, I actually put a Peter Pan collar on this and the whole upper part doesn't actually even fall to my shoulders. It sits so proud like that. 
um, and I don't know what the fitting issue is. Um, so I've been on, if you are on Facebook, then there's a really good group. The Fold Line group is very, it's a very good resource. It's got a lot of people in it and it's got a lot of knowledge there. And I decided to put, uh, to put my quest, my fitting issues to the Fold Line group. So I made a new muslin of the Megan bodice making some fitting adjustments I sized down I put some darts in the back and I thought it'd be better and it's not it's equally bad if not worse I've still got a massive fin of excess fabric and I'm going to put some photographs in now of me wearing it um, and Ian helped me fit it and you can see him holding the ruler showing how much ex excess fabric there is that's pulling at the back of my neck Anyway, I posted these pictures in the fold line group and they, I got loads of replies and to be honest, it was pretty overwhelming and if you're feeling not too body confident, I advise you really to think very carefully about posting, um, asking for advice on fitting issues because I felt quite inadequate at the end of it. I was told um, that the armhole was too tight, that the bus start needed lowering, that the waist starts needed shortening, that I need a narrow shoulder adjustment, a full bust adjustment, a forward shoulder thrust adjustment, a high round back adjustment, um, and I think there may have been a couple more things. Somebody said the pattern just doesn't fit you, throw it out and start again. Um, I don't think it was the advice that I was get, giving because, you know, it's, they're not commenting on my body being inadequate, they're commenting on how I should get a piece of fabric to fit my curves and that is fine. Um, but I think that the thing that actually overwhelmed me about it was that there was a lot of information that was just contradictory. So one person would say some one thing and then the next person would come along and say something completely different and they wouldn't explain why. Um, and when you're a complete novice to fitting issues, I mean, I've got a couple of books. I know how to do a, an FBA, but that is probably, that is it. That is the extent of my, and to grade between sizes, but that's it. And having lots of people, different people providing advice, um, it was, it wasn't really helpful. And actually it, it really um, disheartened me and I didn't want to go and carry on trying I didn't want to carry on like persevere with the fitting um, but I woke up again this morning and thought right I'll try again and I've spoken to a lady who's got some experience of fitting she has given me a couple of things to do to start off with um, so I'm gonna carry on I'm gonna make a new muslin of a different body split in fact this one which is the dress that I'm wearing which is the um, new look 6262 and it's a very basic fit and flare dress it's very similar to the French Navy now all a dress which is just a bodice with sleeves waist arts bust starts and then a gathered skirt and so the bodice itself I want to get to the bottom of I think I do need a narrow shoulder adjustment I think I probably do need a forward shoulder adjustment um, but I need to work out what size I need to cut and whether or not I need to downsize and then do a full bust adjustment or whether I need to, uh, judging by my high, the difference between my high bust and my bust means that actually I don't need to do an FBA, um, I should, or rather I shouldn't need to, but then when I've tried certain patterns on, I obviously do need to size down, but then they're tight in the bust. So there's lots of different fitting issues that I'm going to try really hard to actually get some muslin fabric and not be trying to make a wearable twirl or anything, just get muslin fabric that it doesn't matter if I make a mess of. And I'm going to try and do, get to the bottom of fitting these, fitting a proper bodice. Anyway, we got sidetracked. That was my Megan dress. That's probably a good time to show you my next one. I can't pop this one on the mannequin because um, it's a jumpsuit, but I shall pop some photographs in of me wearing it. Um, the pattern is V9075. I've seen loads of people wearing it. I absolutely love it on other people. I think it's really cool. It's got these massive wide leg culottes, which um, 
are absolutely great as collots on their own. I've seen lots of people use the pattern just to make collots. And so I thought I'd have a go with it. And it was a really kind of testing pattern. I went to quite a lot of effort to get the finish right. And when I spent a lot of time setting in the, um, sorry, hand stitching in the lining and making sure all the finish was beautiful, for some reason I noticed that Although the waist seam, the zip doesn't seem to be massively off there at the waist seam. If you look at the neckline, you can see it's quite no, it's quite noticeably off, and that that would bug me. I would unpick that, but I've hand stitched all the zipper tape down and all the lining quite meticulously. Also, once I actually started wearing it out, there are some fitting issues that don't come to light when you're just standing in front of a mirror. You have to be wearing a garment. And um, it wasn't until I was actually out and about wearing it that I thought, or I, actually it was when I saw myself back in the photographs that I realised that it's a little bit too big on my waist. And actually it doesn't, in fact, if you, you can see here, it doesn't really go in at all between the waist and where the hip starts to go out and I, my waist is quite a bit smaller than my hip and I'd like that emphasised on me especially in such a sort of big pattern as this um, so I think to get it nice in order to get a nice fit and get it done properly I'm going to have to bite the bullet unpick everything um, take some off the princess seams towards the waist um, and refit it again the other thing was Obviously, it's quite a um, it's quite a definite print, isn't it? And it's not my style at all. But I see African wax prints on other people, and I'm like, they're so nice. I love them so much. Um, so I want to have a go on me, but I'm just not sure if they're my style. But I don't know. I like the jumpsuit. I like the style of them. Quite a lot of people said to me when I posted on Instagram and asked for people's comments as to what. Oh, by the way, nice little detail here. I used this selvage at the end of the sleeves and I really like that. See the writing on there. Yeah, quite a few people said it might look better um, without the sleeves, so I might try and remake it without the sleeves. I've got some um, black broderie anglaise that I got from Walthamstow Market and I'm going to remake it as a dress this time. Brodery anglais, it's quite a good pattern for using brodery anglais because it's it's lined and the dress you can obviously fully line it because um, you need to use the lining with that because you can see through it. Um, and I'm going to put some ruffles in the princess seams. And I think that'll look really nice. And then hopefully I can try and get the fit, nail the fit of that a bit. I do find that issue I was talking about with the uh, fabric at the back of my neck, I do find that princess seams tend to fit me a lot better and obviously with princess seams it's easier to tweak and take the fabric out fabric out as well but I actually prefer the look of darted bodices so uh, let me know what you think about my Marmite jumpsuit uh, the other thing that I should mention with this pattern is that the crotch rise tends to be quite high and I didn't um, didn't realize that until I should have actually read some of the reviews of this pattern and then I would have found out but I was able to just um, change, just basically take some out of the crotch seam, which wasn't a difficult adjustment. I just nibbled it out in the overlocker. And I, t I took out, I think I probably took out two inches, so it was quite significant. My next pattern is another Tilly pattern. It is the Martha dress. And this is the, um, I'll post a link actually to the blog that I wrote about it for Minerva Crafts. This fabric was gifted to me from Minerva Crafts in exchange for a blog review and it was actually the last um, last review that I did for Minerva and there's a reason for that which I'll go, go into in a minute but anyway this is my Martha dress the fabric is a John Caldor crepe and it's much posher fabric than I would normally buy I think it was about £17 a metre um, it was very beautiful and easy to sew with and the finish is very nice I'm very pleased with it all my seams matched up perfectly first time um, here's the back the I've used a little frog there 
the zip went in beautifully. I can't remember what uh, Tilly grades that pattern out as, whether it's intermediate or advanced beginner, but I would grade the Martha dress actually as an intermediate pattern. Um, I think it's one of the more challenging ones that I've ever sewn just because of the number of pieces. Um, but because of the fabric being so easy to work with, it was actually a really nice, easy sew. Um, and it looks brilliant on me. I have to say, it fits me really well. I absolutely love the style of it. But, 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 right? And this is a massive but. I have never worn it. I haven't had it on once. I think that part of the problem is the fabric. Um, when you volunteer to write for Minerva, they send out a list of things to be reviewed and you put your name forward and it's helpful to the person who allocates all the fabrics if you can give a first, second and third choice. And this fabric was, although it's beautiful, it's just not me and it's about fifth on my list. And it came through and I was a bit dismayed because obviously sewing a garment is a lot of work and I finished up sewing a garment that I don't need or want and I finished up with this beautiful dress that for me it's too dressy to wear to work I wouldn't wear well I don't go to work at the moment um, but if I was working in an office I think it's probably a little bit too dressy I might I don't know might wear it with a black lace I suppose um, but it's not dressy enough for me for a wedding say if I ever went to a wedding but to you know an occasion like that um, but it's just it's not an everyday dress and I don't know what else I could have made that fabric into that would have made it more wearable. I don't think, I can't think of anything actually. I'm really glad I made it because I've always wanted to make the Martha dress and it was actually a really pleasurable and enjoyable sew. Um, the other reason I stopped, um, so that was one of the reasons that I stopped writing for Minerva was that I, a couple of times I got a fabric that was so da low down on my list of choices that when it came I thought well actually this is not a this is not a gift for me, it's just actually a piece of work and it's not a piece of work that I'm getting paid for because I'm not going to get anything usable out of it at the end. But the other reason was I actually um, bought fabric as a customer from Minerva a few times and about three times actually I was really disappointed with what I got. I was disappointed with the quality, um, the photographs weren't very good the photography of the fabric wasn't very accurate so it came through and the colour wasn't very accurately represented. Um, I find that in terms of buying fabric online the textile centre for me is the absolute like gold standard in they are so helpful in helping you realise what that fabric is going to be like. They show it on a dress form, they describe it and then if it's come out slightly different in the the photo in their fab in their photographs to what it looks like then they will say so they will say this fabric in real life is more orangey than it appears on the photographs which is super super helpful to me as a customer um, Minerva I bought fabric from them that was advertised as white and when it came it was clearly grey and I, so I said that this must have been a mistake and they sent it to me again and it was the same fabric and so the, the issue was obviously with the photographing of the fabric um, but that wasn't the only thing that I had problems with I had um, some um, faux leather come that smelt really really badly of fish which is the glue that they use um, to glue artificial leather but I've had it with really cheap fabric that I've bought but this was wasn't cheap it was seven pounds a meter it wasn't like 1.99 and I wrote to them and said what can I do about this and they never answered my message so in the end with Minerva I did feel that actually I couldn't carry on writing for them because I didn't feel I could write an honest review um, if I'd received some fabric that I wasn't happy with I didn't really feel that I could write a blog a blog that said I'm not happy with this because they just wouldn't publish it so I felt for me it wasn't didn't feel that genuine so I stopped doing that my next pattern is a vintage one and it's a style uh, pattern which unfortunately I've not been able to find the original pattern envelope anywhere sometimes online you can find at least the image that would have been on the pattern envelope and sometimes I print that out so that I've got it in, in my file to see what the um, designers envisaged the garment would look like but um, 
I haven't got that with this one and that's because I bought this pattern online just as it was um, but I really like the line drawing of it and I'm so glad I bought it because I've used elements of this pattern in loads of different things so it is from about 1970 I'll, I'll put it on the screen it's from the 70s I can't remember what year it's got puffed sleeves um, it has a longer version with puffed bishop sleeves um, this large square collar and a button placket down the front and I used this chambray fabric from Abacan with um, the little anchors on that was from Abacan Salisbury and it was about a year ago no about eight months ago I don't know if they'll have any still they do have it it comes and goes and I put a broderie anglais trim on the hem a ruffle with a trim on the hem and I put rip crack around the collar and I just really enjoyed making it it's a really nice fit as well and I actually came across a realization which is that my vintage patterns that tend to fit better they have um, neckline either back or shoulder darks um, and I think that helps take some more take some of that uh, excess fabric away from the high round back issue or whatever it is the fitting adjustment that I've got um, I did do a massive cock up with this pattern and it nearly finished up not in the bin but in the graveyard of regret and um, that was when I made the button placket you can see these button holes are massive and I stitched them way too far over and I've no idea how I managed to make that mistake because you can see the button placket itself is only like uh, just under an inch wide and yet I've managed to get the button pla the buttonholes over here. So I realised what I'd done when I tried it on and so I didn't cut the buttonholes open, they're still stitched up. I didn't bother trying to unstitch them because I thought that would make more of a mess of the fabric and I just stitched the buttons on top of that and then ta da it's our old friend velcro so i've just got that just fashion fastens with a thin strip of velcro and it looks fine you know i got away with it sewing is partly um it's partly making it up as you go along isn't it it's my last make this is a vintage sundress pattern and it is very simple it is a Actually, it's not supposed to be princess themed bodice. It's um, a darted bodice, but I had to resize it from the vintage. I think it was vintage size 14. And I finished up taking so much out that in actual fact, the, um, the dart runs all the way up to the top. So it is kind of a princess seam. Uh, with a, um, I think the pattern calls for a gathered skirt, but I put a three quarter circle skirt on. And the circle skirt was a little bit short, so I used some similar matching red seersucker that I'd got as a ruffle. There's not a lot to say about this, apart from I originally did made this dress to use up scraps that I'd got from uh, quilting projects, sort of where I'd got maybe less than like half a metre of fabric. And this used up, I think, half a metre for the bodice, and I'd got different fabric for the straps and I was doing a tiered ruffled skirt like, like the one that I'm wearing, like this sort of job, and it was just a mess. It finished up looking a mess. Um, I didn't have enough that the ruffles wouldn't fit over my hips. I finished up making, they were too, um, too narrow over my hips and looked a real mess. So in the end, I just went and bought some more of this quilting cotton, which is a cotton and steel um, pattern called, I think it's called Picnic Blanket or something, but I really like it. I love this fabric. Um, so, and I could only find one metre left in the UK, so I finished up, it isn't pattern matched or anything, but the fit on the bodice is really good, I worked really hard on it, and now I've kind of got that nailed, I'm going to be able to use that again for a lot of different sundresses, because I like that style of bodice that goes across, and maybe even make it in sort of dungarees as well. Um, so that pretty much sums up i'll move you back a bit now that pretty much sums up all my makes things <coughs> excuse me this spring and i have lots and lots more 
sewing plans as you can imagine I've got a big box of fabric and patterns and notes that's stacked up by my sewing area but I'm not going to bother telling you about them because as I always say half of them won't come to fruition because new projects will come along and leapfrog and jump the queue um, and so they won't finish up getting made and I don't want you to feel disappointed but don't worry because other wonderful things will get made instead right so that's the end of my waffle for today I hope this video hasn't been too uh, long and boring for you I shall hopefully see you very soon bye